Assalamu alaikum dear students. So I am presenting my lecture number four in the series of lectures of biostatistics. We have already discussed the descriptive statistics for quantitative data and descriptive statistics for qualitative data. We have discussed that how data is presented in different forms. Uh, they can be uh, tables, they can be graphs or bar charts and then we have discussed that in which situation, which uh, a type of presentation present itself. Uh, we have discussed different types of data and today uh, we will be discussing the distribution of data in the population. So uh, the learning outcomes of uh, today's lecture will be that we will be discussing how data present itself um, in the population. We will discuss that uh, uh, how it presents, what is normal distribution, what is skewed distribution, what are the characteristics of Gaussian curve and how do we interpret the Gaussian curve. Fine. Okay, let me take you uh, towards the data distribution. The data distribution means how the individual values of data are distributed in the sample. If they reflect the population which is normal, healthy population, they present in the normal distribution curve. And if the data presents diseased population or if the data presents varied population, then the distribution shape is known as skewed distribution. So let's explain how we talk about the data distribution in terms of graphic presentation. Um, for example, if a researcher wants to find out the IQ level of fourth year MBBS students, fine, and he takes the observations of a sample from the fourth year MBBS class and measures their IQ level. After calculating the IQ levels of individuals, he will calculate a value of mean. And if we distribute this data and assume that the average IQ level of a medical student uh, is um, Usually it is 100 and it can range uh, from um, different values to different values around the mean. So it means that on average we can say that the mean IQ level of fourth year MBBS students is basically 100. And it can range from 85 to 115. It can range from 70 to 130. It can range from 55 to 145. It means the average value is actually present in the center of the curve. And whatever is the single observation, for example, those who have the value of between 185, they will be present here, here, here. And those who have the value of between 100 to 115, uh, 115 their values will be dispersed around the mean in this bar. And as the IQ level is increased, the distribution will go towards the right side. And if the IQ level will be decreasing in the fourth year MBBS students, it will be going towards the left side. It means on an average, if the class on average has a higher IQ than the normal uh, average student of MBBS anywhere, then this distribution will be of these class will be found here. But if the IQ level of my sample will be low in a more range, then this values will be on the left side of the mean. Another example, let's suppose a researcher wants to find out that what is the normal time for the distribution of pizza in a pizza delivery uh, outlet, fine. On average, usually the uh, pizza delivery people say that they will take 30 minutes. But it is observed that sometimes um, it is delivered at 25 minutes, 
sometimes if the people are really working hard and the workforce is more, uh, the pizza can be delivered even in 20 minutes. And uh, some outlets are really, really effective, but the ratio is definitely come. They can deliver a pizza in less than 15 minutes or at 15 minutes. But on average, when we compare the other pizza uh, delivery places where the resources are come, where the working forces come, the average time is uh, increases from 30 minutes to 35 minutes. And even if the uh, service is um, very poor, it go, can go to up to 40 and 45. So in a normal distribution curve, there are the means which are always make the peak of the curve in a normal distribution curve and all those deviations which are towards the right side or left side they show the deviation of or range of the changes in the observation in relation to the mean so it shows the normal distribution curve that how with the varied uh, mm, resources and with varied circumstances the values change from the mean value towards the right or left side another example for example if i want to check that incoming tests for example the first test is of occupational health and i have the whole class which will come and give uh, will take this test and then i will mark them and i will give them scores if I will distribute those scores, then I will see that majority of them will lie around the mean. It means if the passing score is 30 for that particular test, majority of the people will score uh, values around the 30. Fine. So it will make a peak in which the majority of the participants will lie. And then as the number will increase, the number of participants will reduce. All those who will taking um, first position or second position or they are scoring more than 80%. If I will go towards the tail, the value will be increasing. But the number of people in my sample will be reducing because definitely majority of you haven't studied and you will not be scoring good marks. So there will be some students who haven't studied at all. And they will prefer to fail. So if I will mark their scores, they will go towards the left direction. And again, this value will be showing a smaller presentation of the class, a smaller proportion of the class. So whenever we talk about the normal distribution, majority of the population lies close to mean. And then as we move in the positive direction or in the negative direction, the values decreases. The number of uh, participants or the number of observations show lower tendency. And the curve of the P now shows that there is deviation, more deviation from the mean. In a normal distribution curve, which is known as symmetry, distribution ideally in ideal circumstances mean median and mode will always lie in the center and 50% of the observations will lie here and 50% of the observations will lie it means in ideal circumstances ideal circumstances if I am giving a test to a, a class of fourth year MBBS and I set a value of 50% um, passing percentage, then in ideal circumstances, 50% should be getting more than the mean value and they should be passing. And 50% of them should be in the left side of the direction and will be failing the subject. So in a normal distribution curve, the mean, median and mode are always same and they lie in the center. It means the maximum number of people will be getting a score of 50. It means this presents, the peak presents the mode. And I assume that there are um, 
no variations in the data. It means the normal average IQ people are appearing in this test. There are no genius people who are scoring more than 90%. And there are no uh, students uh, in my data set who want to fail this test at zero or at score of five because majority of you will try to pass this test. So there are no variations. So the median mean and mode in a normal distribution curve will lie in the center and they will distribute the curve into 50-50 and 50% uh, of the population will be above the mean and 50% of the population will be the uh, will be below the mean. The, these are the ideal circumstances, but ideal circumstances do not follow, follow. So this is the ideal circumstances in which the mean value cuts the normal distribution curve into two halves, 50% of the population will pass and 50% of the population will fail according to the normal distribution curve. Here, the mean, median and mode are equal. But what do we see in routine life? In routine life, we see that there are people, there are distributions in which there are deviations on the right side or deviations on the left side of the normal distribution curve. It means now the normal distribution curve has been changed into skewed distribution. This distribution shows that majority of the people are working hard and they are scoring greater amount of scores and they are getting good marks. But in this type of presentation, it shows that a greater proportion of the student is not preparing well for the subject and they are scoring less marks as compared to the mean. They are, uh, they are far away from the mean to pass the test. This type of distribution in which both halves are not equal, we called it as a skewed distribution. If it moves towards the right, it is known as positively skewed distribution. If it, it moves towards the left, it is known as negatively skewed distribution. In positively skewed distribution and negatively skewed distribution, mean, median, and mode are not equal and they are not present in the sense. Their values change. As you can see, Mean is, you have to remember that mean is very mean. Wherever the skewness is occurring, the mean moves towards that side. If there is right skewed distribution, the mean will move right on the right side. And if there is uh, negatively skewed distribution or skewed distribution is towards the left, mean will move towards the left. The most frequent uh, observations are done by the mode so it means the uh, uppermost point of the curve is presented with the mode here you can again see the uppermost curve is presented with the mode and between mean and median uh, mean and mode there is median again between mode and mean there is median so as I have already mentioned, the normal distribution curve means no skewness, mean, median, mode will be lay in, lying in the center, 50% of the curve here, 50% of the curve here. But this is positively skewed distribution towards the right and this is negatively skewed distribution towards the left. Another example is that, for example, uh, a researcher wants to find out the mean height in inches uh, of the soccer players which are in a team. So what do he? Uh, what does he do? He takes the individual heights of all the uh, participants or all the players, and he will take a mean. If they, you can see that they are almost of the normal height. So there will be a mean, median, and mode will be in the center, and then. Uh, they will be ranging from around the mean and majority of the observations will lie around the mean. But there is some observation which shows that there are variations in the height of these people. But for this particular team, if the height is measured in uh, inches, you can see that the standard deviation is more, which is three. And uh, you can assess that uh, some of them are uh, of shorter height and some of them are uh, very uh, tall. So in this case, the mean, median and mode, although they are in the center because of the normal distribution curve, 
but the curve range is uh, greater than as compared to this range. So with the base of the curve, we can assess that the range is uh, of the data. For example, it shows that the standard deviation or the difference of the observations around the mean is smaller, but in this standard deviation is bigger or the difference of each observation from the mean is bigger in this case. So how do we actually assess a normal distribution curve? A normal distribution curve is a curve which says that mean, median and mode will always lie in the center and they will be always equal to zero. The whole area is taken as one. It is estimated that the number of observations which will lie around the mean in such a way that plus minus one standard deviation, this is plus deviation, uh, one standard deviation, this is minus one standard deviation, 68% of the population, 68% of the population will lie in the area between plus minus one standard deviation. Then, uh, although they are taken as 1.96 plus 1.96 and minus 1.96, but for the um, understanding purpose, we take it as a plus minus two standard deviation. So when we talk uh, about the values which have taken the position in uh, plus two and minus two standard deviation around the mean, it means this area is covered. It means the 95% of the observations are being done and which show uh, the area which is covered here. And then including the plus three and minus three standard deviation, 99% of the population is covered. But still there is one person population which can be in count, uh, which can go here or which can go here, which shows extreme deviations beyond plus minus three standard deviations. So a normal distribution curve is a smooth curve. As you can see, it's a smooth curve. It is symmetrical. It is bell-shaped curve. The total area of the curve is equal to 1. The mean of this curve is equal to 0. Standard deviation is equal to 1 in ideal circumstances. Mean is always equal to median. Median is always equal to mode. They all are at single point, which is equal to 0. Maximum number of observations are around the mean, which is in the center. And then the phenomena of tapering off takes place. This is for the normal distribution curve. As you can see, for example, a researcher wanted to find out the uh, pulse rate or the heart rate uh, in a normally distributed curve and on average the mean value was 75 beats per minute. So this shows the mean value of 75 beats per minute. So when he actually um, uh, wanted to identify the deviation of values of the observations which were made in the other group which were dispersed around the mean he observed that plus one and minus one standard deviation which was equal to 10 here uh, was that 68 percent of the population will lie between the heart rate of 65 beats per minute to 85 beats per minute it means you will analyze it in such a way that you will say that in a normal distribution curve the mean um, value of heart rate is 75 beats per minute and if we cover the 68 percent of the population the heart rate will range from 65 to 85 um, beats per minute if the values increase up to the plus two standard deviation and minus two standard deviation in this case the standard deviation is equal to 10 now the you will say that 95 percent of the populations will lie in this area that 95 percent of the population has heart rate between 55 to 95 and if you will cover plus three and minus three standard deviation uh, of the normal distribution curve you will say that 99 percent of the population has the heart rate between 
45 to 105. If the heart rate goes lesser than 45 or it reaches to 40, you label it as bradycardia. You do not take it as a normal distribution curve. And if it goes more than 105, then you label it as fibrillations or flutter and you do not label them this population as a normal healthy population so we take normal healthy population in gaussian's curve or in normal distribution curve as according to plus minus three standard deviation 99 percent of the population comes here but still there is a population which can go towards the right skewness or which can go towards the uh, left skewness out of the normal distribution curve So, mean plus minus one standard deviation means 68% of the population is covered. Mean plus minus two standard deviation means 95% of the population is covered. And mean plus minus three standard deviation means 99.7% population has been covered uh, in this particular uh, normal distribution curve. If you look into different types of normal distribution curves, we can see that we can follow the different types of curves. The most important characteristics is that the uh, that the ends do not meet the baseline value. They are always above. It means the infinite values can come into it. The uh, type of the normal distribution curve can show a greater base, a smaller base, and uh, multiple types of uh, observations can be made which can see that the uh, normal uh, mean, median and mode will always be equal uh, and they will be in the center and they will be dividing the population 50% on the right side and 50% on the left. So uh, how do we talk about the probability of the normal distribution curve? It is presented in a bell-shaped way. The center lies uh, as the mean, median, mode, and it is always equal to zero. The base shows the dispersion of the data. As you can see from this, that this is the normal distribution curve. This, this bell shows that there is smaller deviation as the base is small. Uh, it means the values around the mean, which are spread around the mean, are, are show lesser skewness and they are mostly concentrated around the mean so this bell shows smaller standard deviation by looking at the base of the bell and this bell shows the larger deviation because now the population is variedly uh, present around the mean and it is far away from the population mean so the base of the bell always shows us about the presence of the standard deviation whether it is small or the data set shows the larger deviation so the values are uh, whenever there is skewness of data the values move around the mean and they move in the skewed direction as you can see so if it is a skewed distribution the mode will always be represented at the top of the gaussian curve the mean will be distributed towards the skewed distribution because it is very mean and the median will always take the central position and now the mode will not divide the population into 50 50 percent but now the median because it is a skewed distribution the median will be meaningful mean will be meaningless for us and now the median will divide the population into 50% of the population and 50% of the population. So always remember in skewed distribution, mean becomes meaningless. We are more interested in knowing median values. So positively skewed distribution, negatively skewed distribution, positions of median mode, a very important TOSPI question. Uh, usually comes examiner ask about the positioning of the mean median mode in the skewed distribution so how do we interpret our data for example the question comes that the incubation period of measles is 5.5 plus minus 1.58 in a population so now you all know that the mean incubation period is 5.5 days and standard deviation is 1.58 which is plus minus 
So whenever we want to present our data, which is in quantitative terms, we will present it with mean plus minus standard deviation in a population. Now, if the incubation period of measles is given as 5.5 plus minus 1.58 in a population, how will you interpret the results? So let's take this 1.58, which is the uh, standard deviation, and we will round it off and we will take it as a value of 1.6. So we have to calculate the variation on each side of the normal distribution curve. Fine. If the standard deviation is 1.6, so one standard deviation will be 1.6 into 1. Second, two standard deviation will be equal to 1.6 into 2. And three standard deviation will be equal to 3 into 1.6. Fine. So these are the values which are calculated for the standard deviation. So whenever we talk about the mean plus minus one standard deviation, we will be calculating value of 5.5 plus 1.6 and 5.5 minus 1.6. And it will give us a range of 3.9 to 7.1 days. It means 68% of the population actually contracts measles, measles within the incubation period of 3.9 days to 7.1 days clear if we talk about plus minus two standard deviation then 1.6 will be multiplied by 2 that will be equal to 3.2 so mean plus minus two standard deviation plus st uh, two de standard deviation minus two standard deviation and it will give us a range of 2.3 to 8.7. It means the plus minus two standard deviation means 95% of the population contracts measles between 2.3 to 8.7 days within the incubation period of 2.3 to 8.7 days. And if we further take into standard deviation of three, then while talking about the positive and negative values, 99% of the population will range contracting the measles within the incubation period of 0 0.7 days to 10.3. So we can say that the minimum incubation period of contracting the measles can be less than a day and it can extend up to more than 10 days. So we can interpret these numerical data while calculating the mean and standard deviation and we can calculate the distribution around the mean and we can calculate that which percentage of the population will be affected. These also shows the confidence intervals. We are as researcher are now 68% confident that the measles incubation period lies between this time period. We are 95% confident that the incubation period of measles lie between this period. And we are 99% confident as researchers that 0 0.7 to 10.3 is the incubation period in which the incubation period can be less than a day and it can be more than 10 days and it will cover the 99% of the population. Enough. But there may be certain people still present who can contract this disease in less than this time of incubation period and more than this time of incubation period. But their percentage will be very, very low. So with this, I will summarize today's uh, lecture. We have covered Gaussian's curve. We have covered what is normal distribution curve and how it is presented with Gaussian curve. Uh, how, what are the characteristics? How it is... Uh, its shape is changed when the data is skewed, how it affects the distribution of mean, median, and mode when we are dealing with the skewed distribution, and how we can interpret with confidence intervals that the mean and standard deviation will tell us about the interpretation of the data distribution in a normal distribution curve. I'm open to questions. I hope you are understanding the lectures. I hope you are doing uh, the calculations yourself. The subject is volatile. I am repeating, you have to visit this subject again and again to make your concepts much more clear. I'm open to your questions. I'm open to your suggestions. And we'll be meeting soon, inshallah. 
And if you have any queries, you can always come to my office. Thank you so much.